Hey church, and welcome to this week's small group. Now this last Sunday, we spent our time out on the beach doing baptisms. But one of the things I want you to know is that baptisms is not just about the people in the water. Baptism is also for the people who are observing, even if you've already been baptized. When we witness a baptism, it should make us reflect on our own baptism. It should remind us of the commitment that we made to Christ when we said that we were all in for Jesus. And it's also a time to reflect on what we should be doing now to keep that commitment that we made when we were baptized. And so I'd like to start out our time together by telling the group uh, your story about baptism. How old were you and what led up to that decision? And if you were witnessing a baptism with a friend who didn't understand what baptism was all about, how would you explain baptism to them? Two more questions. How is life supposed to change after being baptized? And what would you say to someone who feels that Jesus dying on the cross for our sins is a quote-unquote free pass to sin. Today we're going to be reading from Romans chapter 6 and I want you to start in verses 1 through 4. According to these verses, what is the symbolism behind baptism? And how does Paul use the example of baptism to refute the free pass to sin idea? Next, I want you to read verses 5 through 7. What are the results of being united with Christ in His death and resurrection? And does being freed from sin mean living sinless? If not, what does it mean? I want to be clear. Being freed from sin does not mean that we are now perfect. Being freed from sin means that God has released us from the eternal consequences of our sin. So therefore, we are no longer slaves to our sin. Read Romans chapter 6, verses 8 through 11. In these verses, what is equated with death? And how is the concept that Christ is no longer a slave to sin significant to our daily lives today? What I want you to see is that in these verses, sin is equated with death. And we are also united with Christ. And so if Christ is no longer a slave to death, then we are no longer slaves to sin. However, we still have a sin nature. And so we don't have the consequences of sin in the next life, but we still have consequences when we sin in this life. Next, I want you to read Romans chapter 6, verses 12 through 14. What is Paul's advice to us when it comes to sin? And from Paul's perspective, why is it foolish to run back to sin in light of what Jesus did on the cross? From Paul's perspective, why would you run back to be a slave again when God has set you free? It's kind of like the Israelites when it got tough in the desert that they said, man, I would rather go back and be a slave in Egypt than be out here in the desert anymore. And it was foolishness. But we do the same thing. We, when life gets tough as a Christian, we're tempted to go back to our old life. But I want you to think of it this way. If we aren't trapped any longer by the consequences of our sin in the next life, why would we choose to trap ourselves by the consequences of sin in this life? I want you to close out with this last question. What is an area of your life in which you need to run from sin so that your life might better reflect your baptism? And after you share with each other, close in prayer and ask each person in the group to pray specifically for another individual in the group. So pray for each other. Close out your small group, and then you guys have a great rest of the week. We'll see you on Sunday.